Hello and welcome to Rule of Threes video review for Metal Gear Rising Revengeance by Platinum Games and Kojima Studios. With me are my two partners in crime, Sinister Dreamer. How are you doing? Doing well, and yourself? Awesome. And Impressions. How are you doing this today? Doing good. Good, good. So uh, we're going to be doing Metal Gear Rising, which is a spinoff from the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Um... Obviously, we need to kind of comment on the differences between Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Rising uh, quickly. Uh, the major difference is this is a hack and slash, very, very closely related to Bayonetta and Devil May Cry. Uh, and it has some stealth elements, but you can completely ignore and just go at it. Um, I've played all the prior Metal Gear Solid games, and you have to be able to know that you're not getting a Metal Gear Solid game. You're getting a completely different game. Uh, Sinister, any points you want to put in there? Yeah, I've, I've played all the original Metal, Metal Gear games, plus the few side ones. This one, I know when I first stepped into it, I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to be anything close to actual Metal Gear. Impressions? Uh, the main tagline, obviously, for Metal Gear Solid is tactical espionage action, and that does not apply in any way, shape, or form here. There are obviously plenty of shoutouts and references back to the original series, but completely different brand of action for this ser for this game. So. Yeah. Did you guys enjoy the difference between the two, Side of Chaos, or do you prefer Solid over Rising? I, I, I actually like both of them, but I don't know. I kind of like Rising a little better just because it's a little more fast-paced. That's me. Sinister? Honestly, I prefer the original series. <laughs> That's right. And Impressions? I respect it for what it is. I mean, they're, you, it's apples and oranges. They're two very different yeah. games. It gives you the opportunity to be the badass ninja that you never could be in 4. After everyone, you know, pretty much thought Raiden was awesome. After hating him passionately. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty much how that worked. I like <laughs> well, it more after this, so... Yeah. It's, a, you know, it's, a good, um, it's a good tribute to his character that you never got to really see in 4. Okay, and with that, let's go into the story. So the story of Metal Gear Rising is it takes place after the fourth game, and it follows, obviously, Raiden, who is now a member of a uh, PMC that does mostly security detail for, like, um, senators and, you know, politicians. And, obviously, stuff hits the fan, and he's, you know, out on a, you know, out to go get revenge on the people that killed this one guy. Uh, there's a lot more to it. I don't want to get into spoilers, but the story is it's very Metal Gear in terms of, you know, how, how the story works and its content. Well, uh, just bear in mind that it's also post Metal Gear Solid 4 I said where that. you um, no, where, well, as far as the story content, spoiler for 4 uh, the, the collapse of the system of being under complete control of the Great Treats kind of gives way to a new system of um, combat and military having to do with uh, cyborg technology like Raiden has. So suddenly, everybody's a cyborg. Yeah, well, it's because the PMCs are making everybody cyborgs. You join, join a PMC, you're a cyborg. That's how it seems to be working now. So, I like the story. It's very over the top, and, but it's very Metal Gear. I didn't feel like, you know, it did, you know, dissed or did harm to the, you know, the original franchise's story. Uh, Sinister, you? Uh, not much, just... I was slightly confused at the, in the beginning because it's like, okay, what's actually going on here? <laughs> but for someone that you know prefers mostly stealth games, a fast action storyline kind of just loses me. Impressions? I think it's a good mix of uh, the, the, very, the traditional elements that made Metal Gear Solid popular, as far as the storytelling, the the, the the heavy dialogue and backstory but at the same time they were able to completely um not rejuvenate it just completely reinvent the action for rising um, in the form of the hack and slash as opposed to the stealth so a, little, a good mix of both is what i would say and in terms of character obviously this one deals with Raiden. i like Raiden more now than i did in four just because his character does have a lot of growth in this game uh, unfortunately, you two didn't get to the point to where, you know, even more shit hits the fan and more character development happens. But, uh, what did you guys think of his character, at least in the beginning? Um, it, 
was for me just riding from four, kind of just like, okay, I'm here to do my job, get it done, get it over with. Any impressions? Raiden, I mean, again, more character growth, more character development on his part. I was, I never hated Raiden. I, admittedly, Metal Gear Solid 2 was the first one I played. And granted, you do play a snake for the first 10, 15 minutes of that game. Uh, the protagonist that I got used to first was Raiden. So, as far as my personal interest in his character, it was nice to see some more development and more, uh, re more revealing, more reveals on his backstory. So, it was, you know, I, I think it was a positive step. Okay, and with that, we're going to now go into the gameplay. This game, as being a hack and slash game, is very gameplay heavy. And the main thing with it is obviously you have uh, standard attack and heavy attack, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can combo, you know, like standard and heavy and chain them a little bit to do different moves. Uh, and it works very well. I thought the combat actually flowed very well on this, uh, how they cinemagraphed it and did the graphics for it. I liked it, it was very fun to watch. Uh, Sinister? For being a hack and slash, they actually kind of did pull it off really well with how, you know, heavy, light, and then you can combo it, and then you also have the ability to determine which direction you want to slash, so you can go vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Well, that was in the free slash we'll talk about it a little bit. And then, um, impressions, what did you think? As far as gameplay is concerned, the uh, best metaphor I developed for it was if Devil May Cry and Ninja Gaiden were to have a baby, uh, that baby would play this game and love it to death pretty much. <laughs> and yeah, a lot of you know fast-paced action, I can slash, never a dull moment in the game really unless you're you know, sifting through the story. But, yeah, I think well, uh, after you told me that analogy, I was actually like, yeah, this is probably what Ninja Gaiden 3 probably should have been. Yeah. A little closer to this. Yeah, yeah so, but the hack and slash works really well, and that's because of um, two things. There's, well, three things. Uh, the first is the ninja run. The ninja run allows you to basically jump over obstacles over people and just kind of run around, slash, slide into things, knock them in the air. And I liked it. In the very early game, when I was still trying to figure it out, I held down the ninja run button all the time and just kind of ran around and slashed randomly. And it worked. But I also didn't do as much damage. So it was a trade-off. Sinister? Um, pretty much when you know figured out uh, ninja run, it was like, okay, pull it down, run, fly, tackle, kick the person up, let it go, start into the hack and slash, keep going, run around the enemy, keep go doing the same thing over and over. Impressions? Ninja Run is basically infinite parkour and free run. And if you're not holding down R1 for any portion of the game, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> there's no reason. I mean, obviously, unless you're you know being, doing the more precise action movements, there's really no reason for you to not hold it down and yeah, just run around. Later difficulties, you got to be a little more careful with holding it down. You gotta... Yeah, I suppose. But I mean, in, in as far as a the general sense of the gameplay, yeah. you... you it basically means that uh, actually everything will be a little more fast-paced if you're holding that button down. But obviously, yeah. again, you can navigate without it. All right. All right. And the other element that's really big in this one is uh, the free slice mode. Sinister was talking about it a little bit. It allows you to cut things in any direction, and later on, it actually becomes very critical to know how to cut things and where to cut things because you use that to regain energy off certain enemies by you know cutting them in the exact spot. In some later bosses, you have to you know cut in the right direction in order to damage. I thought it was awesome. This is by far one of the coolest concepts this game has brought to the table. It's just, you know, cutting cutting things the way you want. And it's cool because it tells you how many pieces you cut into, too. And I thought yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, it's like um, back when like, they first announced this game, they had the trailer with you know, Ryan standing there by a watermelon, cutting it off, and just how precise, you know, the angle you can go and how it was. And like, okay, interesting. And just been playing this game and getting it hands on it, it was like, okay, I can see where this, you know, comes in really handy with enemies, because then you can just sit there and slice, 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 and like you said, the count meter was kind of fun seeing how many times you slice the enemy up. Impressions? Uh, referring back to the concept development of this game, yeah, as uh, 
Sinister referred to when it was first marketed by Kojima. It was literally that you could cut anything, not just people, but also structures and uh, items all over the game. And if anything, that uh, Kojima Studio or Konami was actually unable to properly develop that engine, which is why it got passed off to Platinum Games. They did tone it down, but it was still not not by a lot. They, they still retained a lot of the spirit of what I feel Konami was going for in the first place, and the sense of being able to cut your enemy as much in whatever way, shape, or form that you want. So that's pretty much the the, the primary um, mechanic of the game that makes it unique. Yeah, it's the main unique thing that they. Yeah, this is what they marketed the game on was the system, and it adds to just the overall craziness of this game, in my opinion. So. Those, oh, and the other major uh, gameplay element, at least for combat, is they don't have a dodge in this game. Instead, they do what uh, parry, and by pressing the directional pad and the standard attack button at the right time, you will parry a blow and just block it. Uh, if you do it at the right time, you can go in for a counter attack if you have a skill, which we'll come for a little bit. And this system took me a long time to figure out. Because I'm used to dodging, just roll out of the way. And this one I had to figure out like when to parry, which direction to parry. And that took me a long time to get used to. It wasn't until towards the end of the game to where I kind of got it down. Uh, I do like it now that I'm used to it. But it, it's a heavy learning curve versus just if you're not used to a, a parry kind of mechanic. Sinister? Uh, par the parry mechanic, I never got down. It's like it. I could never actually figure out how to do the whole series because it was like, okay, do it. It's like you had to do it just as the enemy was swinging. Like, okay, yeah, I was getting hit a lot. <laughs> Impressions? I mean, for me, I, I would parry when I, you know, intentionally at least whenever I uh, the opportunity came up. But for the most part. Unless you're unless you're you're going for the, the counter kills and uh, the you know, to enter into precise mode via a counter, you're just better off attacking you know, attacking the enemy while he's attacking you, and then sometimes I lead to a parry. I mean, I got the hang of it eventually, but I didn't you know rely on it too much, or as much as I should have rather, I guess. Once again, where you guys didn't get towards the end of the game, Perry, you, you, it becomes a lot harder to just attack during their attacks because some of them have like uh, resistances, and you have to learn how to parry and win the parry. Parry becomes very important later in the game, and then of course on like hard and very hard and revenge its difficulties. I guess that is one thing you know that's good about this game, is it, or as far as how, how it's itself apart from other hacking slashes, is that it doesn't have a guard, it doesn't have a dodge roll. Uh, guy is too good for that apparently, so he'll just. Yeah. Yeah, attack the enemy's attack, literally. Yep. All right. So the last two things I want to go into with gameplay is the first is the VR uh, function. Uh, what this does is uh, Raiden puts on his little map thing, and you can see where enemies are, where items are, where item other just things on the map are, or, or the vicinity are. Uh, it's very useful, especially when, you know, there's a bunch of enemies, and this is where the stealth portion comes in, is you can sneak up behind some of them and take them out before going on to the next one and whittle down the numbers just in case you get caught. Or if you're really good, you can just, you know, kill them all or stealth them all, but I rarely did that. Uh, Sinister? Uh, due to the fact that I didn't get far in, that far in the game, I never actually got to that part, so I have no comment on this. Right. Impressions? If you recall Snake's Solid Eye from the previous series, it's that on crack. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That and pretty much a better integration with the Soliton radar. Yeah. So, it, it really makes it to, you know, it really, they really complement each other. And it plays well into the stealth portion, should, should you choose to pursue that route. And, um, were, were we going to comment on that? little toy he has with the three arms not really because you only get to use that like once okay that uh, well i got to that part at least which is why i mentioned it as far as the stuff is concerned oh, but, it's kind of a fun little moment in the game yeah. well just quick summary then just there's this little toy that you have it's basically a ball with three arms and you walk around with it 
basically this game version of the mini Metal Gear Mark II thing. Anyways, uh, hardly worth mentioning. Go ahead. Okay, so the last thing that we need to really go into is the uh, upgrade system in this game. Uh, as you can beat the game, you get BP, battle points, and you can spend these points on upgrading your weapons, buying new weapons, buying new skills, buying health upgrades, buying energy upgrades, buying new outfits, and all that fun stuff. It works very well. Uh, there's not, it's, you know, it's very accessible, and you get what you, the only thing I wish they did is on the skills is tell you how to pull off the skill. That's the only thing I kind of didn't like about the skills in the game, so when you bought them. Everything else was fine, I, just, I knew exactly what I was getting. And it, you tended to get enough points to get a couple per level. Uh, Sinister? Oh, you never, you didn't even get to the skills, did you? Nope. Yeah. Impressions? I did. Uh, I feel it follows the same rule. My, my personal rule, at least, regarding Ninja Gaiden and Devil May Cry is upgrade the sword <laughs> for anything else. Because, I mean, you, you do get the other weapons from the bosses, but, I mean, basically, it's all about the sword action anyways. So, you know, upgrade those, then work on the armor if you have any extra points. And, would you agree? I would agree, except now I use, an, once again, if I don't really want to say anything, but once you beat the game, you get new like main hand weapons. So, like right now, I'm losing an electric machete. And it's awesome, and it's a little shorter, but it's faster. And stuff. Yeah, the knife, or, or yeah, it's just a little electric machete I got from uh, beating, I think, hard mode. And I bought it. I'm upgrading that, but it well, attacks yeah. quicker, but it doesn't do as much damage. Well, yeah, but as far as uh, people like me who tend to just go for one single playthrough. Oh yeah, yeah, upgrade the sword. Upgrade the sword. It'll make your life so much easier, and. Uh, well, if you want to discuss replay value now or later, or what? Yeah. Or Sinister, do you have anything you want to add on that to kind of cut you off? No. <laughs> okay, like I said, I, yeah, I get it, so I, I figured you just need no comment. Yeah, I, because I didn't get that far. But... Nothing. <laughs> Alright, and that's it for MGR, as I'm now calling it. So with that, we're going to give it our verdicts. Uh, here at Rule of Three, we do not do a point system. We do a buy, rent, pass system. Buy means we think it's the it's the game is worth the full price of admission. It has enough content, it's fun enough, enjoyable enough to you know be worthy of you know the sixty dollars or however much it costs. Rent means you know we still we liked it. It was fun, but it's really good for only one playthrough. So rent it or wait till it goes on sale, like used for half off. And pass thinks means that we pretty much think it was a waste of our time and we should have been doing something better with our lives. Uh, we'll start with impressions on this one. You know, I actually would give it a buy up, like, buy it cheaper, you know? So the rent it, category? I guess, okay. So rent. Rent category. Yeah, okay, I'll say rent then. Basic, I, I do like it. It is a very fun, very, um, very action-packed action and fast-paced game. I'm not sure I would want to drop $60 for it on release. Uh, granted, you know, I have the option to rent it right now anyways. But I think you, I think you can you can wait. Yeah. If you want to be a little smart about your purchases, hold off on playing it. Uh, it'll be, you know, more more bang for your buck that way. All right, I'll go next. I'll be sinister for last for once. Uh, I give it a buy. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. The over-the-topness was awesome. I love the free stu cutting stuff. Um, like I said, I just got really into it. I'm still playing it on the harder difficulties, and I'm just having a blast with it. So high replay value then for you? For me, yes. Where I like playing on harder difficulties and trying to get everything and unlock everything. So very it's much definitely... in the spirit of uh, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. DMC and Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, very much so. But you have to remember, I also gave DMC a buy. And... Yeah. I'd give Bayonetta. Like I said, hack and slash games are. They're fun. You know, I love them, and I, I don't know. Uh, Metal Gear Rising is my new favorite at the moment. I, I'm loving it because it just does so many things right over some just, other games. Yeah, just uh, just so we're clear, I really would want to give it a buy, but again, the mon as far as monetary issues is concerned, that's why I had to put it in the rank category. Yeah, see, for me, uh, I would say buy this game. And Sinister, what, what would you say? I give it a rent because it's a nice, you know, game for the Metal Gear series. But for when when I hear Metal Gear, I think the whole, you know, going in stealth, 
you know, trying to take out enemies without, you know, being just like, okay, bust in the front door, here I am. <laughs> so it's just like, the the new turn really hasn't grown on me yet. Well, yeah, to, to be fair, Metal Gears are pretty much irrelevant in this game. They're more for the uh, cybernetic enhancements as opposed to Metal Gear. Yeah, Metal Gear's not relevant. Uh, you know something's... Uh, yeah. Something, you, know, you know the game's going to be awesome when the very first boss is Metal Gear Ray. <laughs> you beat the crap out of that thing. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, that's, was that, that was in demo, right? I think so. Spoiler. So nah, no spoilers there. <laughs> so there you go. You have Brents from Sinister and Impressions and a bye from me. Uh, that's it for this review. Thanks, guys, for joining me. So next week we will be doing Crisis 3. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And that's it. Make sure to leave a comment below for our new Injustice giveaway. Uh, like us on Facebook, Twitter, subscribe to our channel, do all that fun stuff. Uh, tell your friends so we can, you know, grow this community and, you know, get some more views and, you know, spread the word of how awesome Rule of Three is. And thanks for listening and always remember to trust in the Rule of Three.